Hey, welcome back everybody. We are here again. We're going to do uh, stepping up your slide. So this is kind of a upper level um, Google slide training. And uh, we've got Taylor Ricker here from Henderson County helping me out. And uh, we're going to do our top three picks and their difficulties are going to vary, I believe, a little bit. But these are things that, you know, if you're not want to just do a typical presentation, these are things that kind of up it a little bit and the they're not super hard tricks. Um, I know one of them, I always tend to consider the more of a master level. And to me, it's just, it's not as intuitive as some of the other ones, but they're not hard steps. So Taylor, you got anything to add to that? No, I'm just super excited to be back here again. So it's fine. I enjoyed this last time. So I was yes, looking forward was, to this again. Yes, it went really well. So I'm going to let you lead us off this time. Okay. So your first pick. So my first pick is with Google Slides, but it's also adding um, Google Drawings in here. So this is taking a Google Drawing and saving it as a PNG for a drag, a drag and drop. So if you can see, I'm in Drawings. I just typed the word February because I'm just doing the calendar. And then when I save it as a PNG, it saves it as a transparent background. Um, and then I just go to my slide deck and then just add that image there and what that does is if you've used google slides before and you do kind of a drag and drop and you just do like a text box or um, even a shape and you type in there um, the students if they're doing it they can edit the words and they can kind of mess it up a little bit but this is just making it a picture so that drag and drop is just so much easier for them um, so it's, everything else is kind of the same as far as the drag and drop concept. It just kind of makes it a little bit cleaner. Um, and then I also do again, um, if you're interested in just having not having a transparent background, but if you want like a little bit of color. So I just do another, um, I just do a shape as the background and then type inside of there. So just kind of give you a different option on how to make that drawing for your drag and drop. See that, that that's just that awesome way of just taking a simple tool like drawings, which a lot of people don't mess with drawings, but if yeah. you're familiar with slides or PowerPoint at all, drawings is so easy to jump into and use. Yes. And so that's yes. awesome. Yeah. Just that, that drag box. and drop is, is huge. So it's just like making it a little bit easier. Those kids are in there and they like change your word. And so just kind of micromanaging probably <laughs> a little bit there. <laughs> No, that's a good one. I haven't seen that presented that way. Like I said, it's yeah. taking that text box and just making sure it's nice and secure and you're not going to have that. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. All right, my pick. I'm trying to remember what my pick was. All right, this is a page size file form. Um, so Google Slides, you can go in and you can do the same thing in PowerPoint. We can change the uh, size of actually our picture canvas. And I, I use this a lot when I tell teachers like, rethink your worksheets and instead of making it in drawing, do an eight and a half by 11, do it in slides and you can move things around. But you can take the same idea and do like a four by six. So you know this is going to be like picture size and you build these kind of info cards. And um, I saw this at uh, Kisty a few years back. A teacher did a like dog breeds and they did all these different things. And then they went to Walmart after making this and printed off on actual photo paper. And so that was cards that they passed around in their classroom. So taking this nice digital cool tool and making this little analog touch item that is just really neat, but it's just so simple to do. You set up your picture, your little info cards, however you want. And then when we get done, you will change this just like you kind of do with the uh, drawing and doing PNG we'll export this as a JPEG. Now, I will say this about PowerPoint. This is where PowerPoint wins this. They do kind of this mass exodus when you do file save as JPEG, where it's all slides. With slides, you're gonna have to do current slide, current slide, current slide. So if you're making 30 of these, it can build up a little bit of time. But mm -hmm. what my suggestion is after you make one, go ahead and export it. Go to your next one, make it, then export it. Um, but it is, a pretty simple process um trying to build time until i get to the actual where you do file and export as. <laughs> and so but, it kind of takes i mean thinking about teachers um laminating all this stuff so it yeah. kind of takes that little extra part out and having to do all that yeah somebody um brought up today they were talking about doing um 
their assignment and like talking about how to laminate this. And you know, it, it really does not cost a lot to just run to Walmart and run this as a f f file photo. So you know, just yeah. saving it as a JPEG, you'll save it as one, put it on a jump drive, head out to Walmart, Walgreens, whatever, and uh, print it off that way. Or super cool online cloud submission or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, yeah. Something else you can also save these as uh, PDFs. So it, you're thinking about resizing and doing that. I saw one person where they resize this into something like a two by 14. So it's this really long on scrolling PDF, but it was just visually really neat to see them just scroll down. So. Yeah. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I never thought about that. And your number two. So this next one is um, editing pictures. So if you notice, I kind of start with my Bitmoji um, and how if you don't want that big high there, how you can get rid of it. If you just double click on that picture um, and then a big black line comes across the photo, um, you can cut it down and kind of trim it that way. And then also when you have the picture highlighted up at the top next to crop, you can also make it different shapes um, just so on your presentation or whatever it may be, not all of your pictures are rectangles, just kind of change it up a little bit. And um, so like in this one, I just changed my Bitmoji kind of to a circle where it just looks a little bit different. Um, something so small, but can make such a difference in the overall presentation there. Yeah, it's it's that cropping shape that uh, that it was something that I've never heard anybody speak of. And the first time I saw that, I was like, that's just so easy. And apparently it's been yeah. there forever. And uh, it's just a very clean and crisp. I started seeing students when they, after showing it to them, when they started doing their presentations on things, it just looks so much nicer than just that square rectangular cookie cutter. Yes. And all of them the same size would just get you that kind of different look to it. But yeah, just that little arrow right next to that crop button that, <laughs> you know, can easily go unnoticed. And I would say like, I've seen this with a lot of students submitting like their digital work. Now I'm not mm -hmm. saying put a circle cut out, but just that crop tool alone when they're turning in work. If you teach them that, it makes it so much easier for you to grade something when they're trimming out their hand that's covering up part of the problem when they were turning it in. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. My number two pick is the, uh, I'm going to cheat and go kind of outside of uh, slides and get into their uh, Pear Deck add-ons. So uh, definitely this is the add-on I think everybody has to have in slides in my personal opinion. Uh, it's really easy to get add-ons. Just go to add-ons and then search for Pear Deck. Your administration might have to allow the installation of it, but Pear Deck allows you to create interactive slides and oh, interactive slides and slides. But uh, the neat thing is inside their own system, they have all these pre-made templates. So in this case, let's say I wanted a social studies interactive lesson. I can actually jump into Pear Deck and run through their uh, little template selector and get all kinds of neat ideas about how I might want to proceed with my lesson about doing these kind of uh, formative assessments during the middle of class. So focuses on social studies, maybe I want to do a map activity. So I'll kind of scroll through and look at the different map choices they have. And then for this example, I'll pick one and then it's going to build an interactive slide for you where when you start up Pear Deck, students are just going to slide over their little icon or their little uh, clip art piece, their uh, icons, yeah, and uh, put it in. But the really neat thing is you get to edit these. So they're pre-done, yes, but you can go back in and change up some of the images, some of the graphic pieces, and make it where it's fitting your lessons more closely. So we could have changed the map piece and have it be United States, and then you're actually going through the states and that kind of stuff. So these different templates that are on there, don't think they're like, oh, I, well, I'm not going to do that activity. Take that idea and see, you know, you can tweak, you can put layers on top of these things and make them your own, but they are your editable slides to do for these interactive pieces. And if you're not familiar with Pear Deck, you, I definitely say you need to check it out. And everything I'm doing right now is completely on the free. I'm not paying for a Premiere. I've seen the Premiere. The, a lot of the Premiere features are awesome, but it you can get by really well with the free stuff that Pear Deck provides to you. Yeah, and um, I'm pretty sure, I know that they did in the past, I don't know if it's still going on, but Google Certified Teachers um, can get Pear Deck for free. Um, and then as far as like the pre-made ones, 
when Paradise first came about, correct me if I'm wrong, but they didn't have all those pre-made templates. So it's continuing to grow and they're continuing to add those on there. So something, yeah, definitely to check out. And I, I've got to praise Paradise too, because I've had teachers like, well, I've got, I, they did the trial of the premiere sessions. They're like, well, it's about the end. I was like, a lot of times they'll reach out to you and like, would you like longer? And I've known mm -hmm. teachers who said, I've used it for three months straight. They just kept adding more time for me. And so and there's, it's worth checking that out as well to see you know, what the premiere features might be for you. I know some people are like, well, if I'm never going to buy it, I don't want to touch it. But it, it's, yeah. it's worth kind of seeing some of the different tools they have and talk to your district about potentially picking it up or school. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right, your number one pick. All right, so this is the big one. This one's the, my favorite one and definitely something that if you're using slides, definitely something that you want to kind of learn about. So when you're creating a slide, um, you're adding text boxes or anything on that slide like you're doing. So if you notice, I was kind of clicking around in there and everything is editable because I added a text box. Um, but you can make it where it's not editable. So right now what I'm doing is I'm taking everything on this slide. And so if you hit control A, it takes everything on that slide. And I'm going into view and then master. And so master is kind of this hidden thing inside of um, Google Slides where I am creating the same slide deck, but it's in the master. So then it's not editable for those students. So notice I'm putting all of this in here and right now I can still edit it. So I'm adding an extra checkbox um, you can do whatever you want. But all of this is going to stay kind of like on the background. Um, so then when I go to um, the top left hand where I'm adding a new slide, I'm adding um, the layout. You'll notice that I'll click the arrow and that layout now is there where I just added all of that stuff on there. So now when I go in there and I'm clicking and I'm trying to do all of that, I can't. Um, so your students wouldn't be able to. So then I can go in there and then I can type anything or whatever I want them to be able to edit. But it just kind of locks all that stuff into place um, where students aren't able to mess anything up. Which is frequent. <laughs> yes. The, uh, <laughs> what's neat about this is when you're you're looking at like these layouts and like this is how i want it to be hyperlinking is an option in here still too so you can have yes. it where the hyperlink is in there and nobody's accidentally breaking the link on you or hiding it somewhere else but it's still if i created a shape that was hyperlink they can still click that shape and it still works as a hyperlink yes That's um really cool kind of not necessarily a downfall but just to be aware if your students were to get on here and figure out the whole master slide thing they can't get on there there's not a way for you as the teacher to kind of lock that down yeah. um but just don't tell them about it <laughs> just don't teach them about it and um, just kind of let that be your secret now i am falling under the same suit we're going to be working in master slides um my thought process is going off that new layout but having it where you're kind of creating an assignment for the students to kind of work off of that new layout. So if you want them to have this nice uniform look to their thing, you can go into that master slide and you actually right click and say new layout and start fresh from there. And so from here, you can actually build up. Now the neat thing is you can put in like, here's my pre-rendered text. This is what I want it to say. But then you can also say, now here's a text box. This is where I want students to actually type. So you can start off by actually like, all right, this is Tim's project for this. And you say, oh, well, my name is. And then you actually come back in and we're going to put in the actual text box. Let's see if I get around to it. <laughs> we actually put in the uh, text placeholder and that's where it's actually going to go. And so you actually type this out. I, and this can go beyond just the students. Um, I like this idea. I never got to try this out, but I would often have my students presenting something. And so this is a nice way of like, all right, when Tim goes up to present, I'm going to do a new slide and then I can do my grading rubric like this. And it's pre-rendered for me to fill in all my information that I want to do for the student. And then I can run those individual slides back for the student. Like, oh, here's your grade. Here's my graded rubric that I did for you. And it's just a matter of building these things up. But then when you actually just as you presented, go back to actual slides, you just go into that new slide 
and there it is. And you can actually name these for different things. So it might be, um, we're doing scientific method. This might be how I want you to state your thesis state. Well, not your thesis, but your, um, all right, I'm lost on words here, <laughs> but your, uh, your, your guess for what the experiment's going to go for. I'm your hypothesis. Well. Your hypothesis. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to go into math mode. I'm going to, your hypotenuse is, and that's what that was. Right there. My mind goes in math too. So I, when you said science, I was like, oh, I'm oh, trying man. to help. <laughs> but if you, uh, you have it there and then here's my, here's how I want your scientific process to go. And you can actually build these pieces and you're like, there it is for your students. All they have to do is find that new slide and drag it down and that'll be the piece. Absolutely. And also in master slides, if you only want that one there, so you don't have to kind of like go and search, you can delete all of those and just have the ones that you want to use on there. So it's not kind of overwhelming, but the idea of that and having those text boxes already there, I, that was a great idea and something that can definitely be used. And even though in this sense, you used it just as that blank background, you can still add a different background on there too. This is just kind of what you want them to add to that slide. And, say, and if you have multiple layouts, you can have multiple backgrounds that are undisturbable and it's there waiting for that. Yes. Yep. Oh. So master slides is where it's at. Yeah, that's where it needs to be. And like I said, this is this is a step up, but yeah. I think the hardest thing with the master slide, is it's just not obviously there. You have to kind right. of go looking and when you first pulled up, it's like, oh, I don't want to touch any of this. I'm going to break something. You're not going to break anything. You might lock something down for a little bit, but it's really easy to undo or start a new presentation and you're starting fresh and undo what you just broke. So. Yes, yes. And just to keep in mind that you don't want to put everything on the master slide because if you're doing something that your student, you're wanting your students to do, they have to be able to edit on it or move yep. it or um, kind of whatever it is you were wanting them to do. Don't have to overly lock them down. Right. <laughs> Well, that's all I've got. You have anything you want to add? No, I don't think so. I appreciate you having me again. No, I look forward to it always. And thank you yeah. everyone for watching. Um, please tune in. I'm, I'm sure we're going to keep doing series like this. And uh, if you have any suggestions, ideas, you need to reach out to us for further explanation on something, don't hesitate to ask. And uh, I thank you all again. Yes, thank you.